Yo, welcome to Containing Luxury. So on this episode, we were gonna be covering how to install all your cedar siding, uh, but I'm shorthanded, so we're gonna decide to go get us some insulation panels, discuss the different types of insulation panels you can put on your exterior, and uh, which ones are gonna be good for both interior and exterior. So let's go get that stuff, and then we'll get back here and show you how to install it. That would be great for the audio. Here's my Home Depot mother. So, as you can see, there's a lot of different types of insulation. Um, this is over at our local Home Depot store. Certain insulations are gonna be good for the inside, certain ones are gonna be good for the outside. So, if you're insulating on the inside, you have to use the closed cell stuff. So that's gonna be all these boards. Uh, they don't have any of the super thick stuff here. Yeah. No, no, está bien. <laughs> okay, so the uses of something like this type of board are actually written right on it, pretty simple. Interior, exterior walls, basements or crawl space, under slab and foundations, do it yourself and craft project panel, there we go. And this is what we were talking about where we'd have to put a fastener. So say we had our cedar siding on here this is that uh, our substructure, whether it's uh, in so fast or is um, the two by twos that we ripped down, they would be flush up against the back of this and then our panel would be up here. And then you'd have to get a, a fastener that's gonna go through that siding, through your insulation and into your, into your uh, two by two in the back. So this would be a good insulation board to put on the exterior and a lot of different applications, but you just gotta make sure you got a fastener big enough. Okay, so this is gonna be your bat insulation, which is uh, a lot of time it's fiberglass or sometimes now it's like composite. Um, but most commonly it's gonna be fiberglass bat insulation. Really itchy stuff. It's what's gonna be most commonly found in your attics in exterior walls of wood frame houses. So this is a, it's a really typical product of insulation, but not ever gonna be used on the inside of a shipping container. Um, if you see somebody using bad insulation, they do not know what they're doing and it is going to cause a major problem down the road. So, so just be weary of that and anyone that gives you plans or, or has a plan that has bat insulation showing on the inside of a shipping container, don't go with that. Okay, so these are gonna be some of, uh, this is actually a closed cell board. Uh, this is a really thin one, the half inch. So most of the time, they're actually gonna have a little chart like this that's gonna help you figure out your R value. And your R value... And what R value means is actually the resistance to heat flow. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating power. And I know I sound like a genius, but it also says it right here. The, the chart actually explains exactly how this process works. So this is a half inch piece, so the R value is real low at 3.2. So the higher you get, obviously, the more insulating value you have. So you can go four and a half inches thick, but that would be like that thick of a panel would get you 31. That would be super energy efficient. But it goes beyond when calculating the, air or the, uh, the R value, it goes beyond just this insulation board. The siding itself, the heat load on the container from sun, you know, air voids actually, uh, Yeti uh, is a super amazing, you know, thermos and it actually just has an air void. So there's no insulation in it. So I could be wrong about that, but I've seen one cut apart and that was the case. It was stainless steel, air void, stainless steel. So um, we, we designed our container with a method in mind that allowed for different air gaps and it actually gave us an insane insulating power. So it goes a lot further than this, but if you use this as a basic chart of, you know, in, the more, more layers you have, the better insulating value. Whee! Oh. Hand Thanks. Hand model. I know. That was a hand model. High model of the year, 13 years in a row. So what we could do is if you get an insulation board, just double check a fastener that's just gonna be big enough just to tack it in to the, into your substructure. So in this case, this will be fine. It's just literally there just to hold it in place until I can put my siding over the top of it and that's gonna nail all the way through this into those, into that substructure. So I just need something just to tack it temporarily. Weighs like 14 pounds. Actually it weighs like one pound, if that. 
Well, it goes to show you how heavy it is. <laughs> Whoa! I'm gonna put a couple of these in my pouch, and then normally what we do is we pull a measurement off the bottom rail. Let me move this out of the way. So we pull a measurement off the bottom rail. We know that these sheets are four foot by eight foot. So, yep, four foot. It's pretty windy right now. So what I would do is kind of mark this at four foot. It'd probably help if I had a pencil on me right now. But I'd put a pencil mark right at four foot there, do another one over there, and then a chalk line. But a chalk line, they're like $7 over at Home Depot. It's gonna make your life really easy. You just hook onto your pencil mark here, come across, hang it, line it up there, and snap it. And you can do a really long section all at one time. That's gonna allow you to make sure that you're working off of a straight line when installing all these. Luckily, these are pretty lightweight. But just get a, a nail tacked into the, uh, into the center. So again, I'm just gonna tack one more nail. That's just gonna hold it in place. And a lot of these, I even have my demo hammer. I don't even have my regular one. Um, so again, these are just kind of here to hold this insulation in place. When we grab our siding, we're again gonna want to snap lines. So essentially we now have this nailed off. You just gotta put a couple in to kind of hold it in place. And sometimes you can just go in a straight line down. You can just tack in a couple. Okay, so essentially once we have that, good. Now we pull a measurement for our cedar siding, which in this case is, I think these are seven and a half, seven, there's seven inch planks. They're supposed to be seven and a quarter. Yeah, seven and a quarter. That one's just a little short. So what we do is we'd want to overhang this insulation a little bit. You know, we'd snap a line again, maybe seven inches up across this whole board, snap a chalk line, and then with our cedar siding, we'd be working from the ground up, coming up the, and then we're shooting through this insulation, if we can see up here. We're gonna shoot through this insulation into this board up here. So I gotta make sure I'm using a fastener. In this case, I was using these to attach through this, which you can see how much is only going into that stud. So I wouldn't wanna use this, this nail to go into the, through my board because bar you know, barely any of it would be catching. So I wanna probably add at least three quarters of an inch to this. These are inch and a half, so two and a quarter or even a two and a half inch nail would be ideal for shooting in that cedar siding through this insulation. So if you have a thicker insulation board, you gotta make sure you're calculating all that stuff and make sure at least three quarters of an inch to an inch penetrates into your substructure. Okay, so we're gonna mark this out um, at seven inches because our siding is seven and a quarter and I want a little bit of a lip. I guess I'll actually come all the way down here. So I'm just holding this right at seven. I'm just putting a little mark. And then when you're one hand or one guy, you can actually just use the chalk line here, hook it on that mark, pull it all the way down, hold it on your mark there, pull it tight, and just boom. So I actually only had blue chalk with me but they have red or orange. Uh, red is probably gonna be your best for this. But <clears throat> now at least we have a line that we can work off of. If I were to take one of these cedar planks here, I would then be able to put this like so and use that line right there just to tack this in. Now what I might wanna do in advance, in this case, we're doing the insulation as we're doing the siding. So I can actually see my lines. So if you're a pretty good carpenter, you may not need to even snap some vertical lines on where your studs are or your, uh, your backing is. If you want to do this, it takes a little bit more time, but you'll be dead on if you, know, if you don't have a good eye and a lot of experience. You can just clip on, you don't even need to put a pencil mark, but just clip on and, and kind of come straight down from that, snap a line, and then go down all of them, just as straight as you can. And a lot of time, if you hung this panel level or straight when you first put it up, like ours is perfectly flush off the bottom, 
then the printing I can use as a guideline to make sure I'm straight. So you can kind of see my pencil or my chalk line is the same distance off all these little plus marks on there. So I know right where it is. Um, you can also use those as a guide if you were knowing where your, your, pen, your, uh, your stud is. If I know, okay, I'm just shooting just off the side of these. So that's what these are here for to kind of give you a reference point. So I can use those when going straight down. So now that I got that reference point, um, I can kind of go ahead and install this, this first layer of lap siding. And with lap siding, virtually any, any type of siding you're putting in, you're always gonna work off the bottom and work your way up. So all those seams are overlapping, the water kicks over them and never gets behind them. So um, I have, I've got this DeWalt uh, framing nailer that I can shoot a couple of different size nails with. Uh, this is an expensive tool. So if you don't have this, if you're doing some other, uh, <laughs> some other work, you might have just uh, regular finish nailers. So this is solely gonna be used just to hold it in place. You can go back and hand nail it if, if that's your preference. Uh, you could put screws, but it will take you a really long time. But say I'm by myself right now and I'm trying to put this siding in, I can actually kind of get to a point where I'm flushing it up to the end there. I know where my starting point is. I'm gonna come down a little bit right to my chalk line there and, and there. So now I have those reference points so I could just shoot a little finish nail. Oop, that just shot right through. So we're not gonna use that one. I would have to turn down the power on that, but. Okay, so now that's gonna be able to hold it in place. So that first nail I shot uh, with a finish nail or trying to show you how you can tack these things, it just shot straight through the wood. So a lot of these guns are gonna have adjustments on them, which kind of show you a little chart of sinking the nail further or setting the nail further out. So what I'm gonna do is make it so it's gonna hold that nail a little bit further out and just do a test nail. I shot it in with my framing nailer, but I'm just gonna shoot a little test nail and make sure that, yep. So now that's good enough that I could use this if I just had a, a finish nailer just to kind of tack the board in place so that now if I wanted to go back and hand nail all this stuff, you know, I guess I could find a place here. I could go back and hand nail this but this is gonna take a lot more time. If you don't have a framing nailer, you can just use something just to tack it, like a finish nailer or something, so you can free up your hands if you're doing this by yourself to go in and, and finish off all the nails. But definitely never use a finish nailer just to put on your siding. A bad storm is gonna come right off. So, so I could take another piece here and I'll try and ninja slide this behind me. Ugh. Okay, that didn't go as smooth as possible. But they're pretty big pieces. But again, I'm not gonna put, I guess this isn't again, because I didn't explain this yet. But this next piece would essentially, you know, go like so, but I would be lapping my pieces. So I would cut one off to flush with my starting piece. I'm gonna put a trim piece at the end, but I would have, um, I would have this, this board so I have lapping seams. Right, sorry, I don't have seams that are right in line with each other. I'd wanna have a seam and then another seam over here and the next one seam over here so that that way you don't have a leak point where water's just getting through. When getting onto your second row, uh, they actually make a tool that you can clamp onto the boards which will help guarantee that you have the same reveal on each plank going up. But if you don't have that, um, and it's not a common tool to be able to find in, Maine, in other areas, but not around us because most of our finish is stucco finish down here. But if you had to, you could just take your tape measure and, you know, again, just mark about five inches up from the edge of this. And then again, you could go, you know, about five inches from there. And if you did marks every five inches, then you'd have a line that you could snap again all the way across here every five inches is then going to give you because these boards are seven and a quarter you're going to have two and a half inches of guaranteed lap that's going to you know protect it from water that's virtually your siding just make sure that you're calculating out you got to get into that 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 uh backing stud at least a three quarters to an inch uh anything less than that it's going to be it's not going to be holding the the piece of siding well enough so Take into consideration the thickness of the part of the board that you're shooting through, your insulation, and how deep you need to penetrate into that backing stud.
All right, guys, so that's about it for our uh, insulation on the exterior with siding. Uh, again, I didn't have the hand I was hoping to have today, so we kind of made do with kind of showing you the basis, basics of installing siding over insulation and a lot of the different types of insulation that you can and cannot use on your exterior and your interior. So uh, I hope it was helpful. Um, virtually, you know, if you have a different type of siding, hard, hardy, wow, hardy board, yeah, that's it. Hardy board or um, you know cedar siding or even if you were putting plywood over that and wanted to put lath and stucco, it's virtually the exact same concept of what we just showed you. You're just taking into consideration the thickness of the board, the thickness of whatever insulation you used, and how deep you want to penetrate into that, that backing. So that's about the basics. You should be able to apply that to anything you're doing. So we hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this video. And again, if you want to try and support us, we're an educational series. So you can hit that Patreon account. Other than that, subscribe, share, and hit the bell. We'll see you guys on the next one.